Here we will discuss how to use the mobility data provided by Google to identify patterns of activity during the COVID-19 period. So the mobility data provided are in six different categories looking at retail and recreation, groceries and pharmacy, parks, transit stations, workplaces, and residential. They are given as percent change from baseline activity, meaning how much activity happened at a regular time and looking at how these change during the COVID-19 period. The data set available has different states, different uh, counties listed looking at different dates and how there was changes in these different activities or around these activities. If we plot the raw data, we will see certain graphs like this, looking at the different categories. Some of them increased in activity, as we can see here. Uh, many individuals stayed home more and many other activities saw a decrease. Uh, for example, workplaces saw a decrease, transit stations saw a decrease, and retail and recreation saw a decrease. And things like parks and grocery stores didn't see much of a decrease and were similar to baseline. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this data set and try to extract the counties that we like to study and list it out as separate tabs. So uh, to do this, what I have done is I have used a Google uh, uh, Excel search, so you can copy the county that you are interested in, go to all data, do control F to bring up the find tab, and here you can paste the county you are interested and go for find next. And that should be able to look, that should help you locate the counties you are interested in. And by doing that, you can highlight the data for the county we are interested in from the start date, which is February 15th, all the way till the 15th of, 15th of May, or the 16th of May, as we can see here. So once you have the whole data set you are interested in, you can copy that and paste it onto a new tab, like what I have done here. So that part has already been done, and I have extracted this data for 10 different counties and these 10 counties were part of our group in our study and as you can see the same data do a search extract them create a new tab and you'll be able to organize them in this way once we have all the 10 counties or how many other counties you would like to study uh, we will then start grouping them what i have done here was separated them out for the six different categories separately. So if we have categories retail, groceries, parks, transit, workplace, and residential, we created six different categories. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then what I did was I went to each of these categories. Say if I am in this particular county, which is Cook County, I would select the whole all data set for retail and once I have selected that we will copy this and once we go to the appropriate location what we will do is we will um, keep the um, bring the tab to the location you want to start it and you will paste that as a paste of a transposition so when you do the transposition the data that was on a column on a vertical axis will now be a horizontal axis giving this data set. So you will need to do that individually for each of the counties, for each of the categories, so that you can separate them out for the six different categories and group the counties that you like to study together. So again, as you can see, we have the data from the 15th of February all the way through 16th of May. And our study is slightly a shorter period, but it's okay as we can plot the graphs accordingly. 
Now, if we use the data that's given here, we will end up with a graph that looks like this. Even though we see some common trends, it has a lot of noise where we see there are increases, decreases, and some of these uh, changes I explained previously as being a week's worth of activities where you will have five days, five time points for the, uh, the weekdays and two point time points for the weekends. So we see these weekly trends. Uh, to be able to smooth our graphs out, we are going to consider uh, changes in activity on a weekly basis. So to do that, we already have our groups that we grouped out on a daily basis, what we are going to do is we are going to take the sum of the activities for seven day periods. So in this case, it's going to be this seven days and we are going to take the sum of all the changes and divide that by seven. So if there was some positive activity and negative activity, that will uh, give us an average. If it was all positive or all negative, we will get the sum and by dividing it by 7, we will be able to get an average daily change that will help us to smooth the uh, charts or graphs. And that's the calculation that's shown here. Once that is done, we will then be able to reduce the number of time points again back to the 11 time points we're looking at, starting on the 1st of March all the way through the 5th of May. So these 11 points will give us weekly change graphs for each of these counties. And once we use this data, we will be able to generate a graph that looks like this. And for students, I will provide um, a template of these graphs so you can use the template without having to do all the formatting together. But just to help you through the process, I will walk through the uh, formatting and creating this graph once with you. So we will look at the retail and recreation for this group that we have and see if we can create this particular graph. So to begin with, we will select this data set. And since we already have our county legend here, it's going to make our plotting one step easier. We will insert a scatter plot that is with the lines joining them, and we already have the graph. We will go ahead and bring this into a new chart, and we will name this Group 1 Weekly Mobility Plot. And we have our new graph, and this is, um, let me see, this is what we want for it to look like. So as you can see, we, we have made a few modifications to look like what it's at the end product. To do so, we will highlight the entire graph. We will change the font to Arial, increase the font to 28, make everything bold, change the font color to black, and then we will go ahead and remove the the grid, we don't need the grid. And we will now modify the axes. The x axis is right here. We can go ahead and put the tick marks. Same for the y-axis. We will change our dates to the format that we will just use the month and the day. And here we will have our start point again on the 1st of March which will be an additional 11 more days. And we will make this a two-week interval. So 
14 days apart. And now let's go ahead and get our legend to our usual location on top. We can make the legend slightly smaller since we have so many letters or so many counties listed there. Now, as you can see, the x axis is located right here. Uh, it, it is interrupting our graphs a little bit. So, what we're going to do is bring the x axis all the way um, to the bottom of our graph. To do that, you will select the x axis. And you will come to this that says vertical axis crosses. Right now it's at automatic. We are going to give an axis value and we will make this value um, a minus 100. Okay, I think we need to change it for the other axis, not this particular one. So let's keep that automatic in right here. We will do the same thing where we'll make this a minus 100. So make sure we are selecting the right axis in doing that. And as you can see, this axis was brought down and our chart is much more clear. Uh, now that we have these dates listed here, and in the two weeks interval, this is the study period that we're looking at. Uh, in our previous videos, I showed students how we can change these, um, change these plots to look, have more thicker lines and even get rid of these um, points, the marker points. So if you like to know how to do that, please refer to the previous video. In this video, uh, it looks fine the way it is. We will do one more change and then we will be done with what this chart will look like. Actually, a couple more changes we can do. So we will go to Format, go to Shape Outline, and we don't need an outline for the image. We want uh, axis titles. So let's go ahead and add some axis titles. In this case, we will have the x-axis, sorry, the y-axis will be percent mobility change or percent change. Let's call it percent mobility change. And the x-axis will be the date. The chart title will be mob mobility change and we can call it a group one or any group that we are looking at. The last thing uh, we have on our, on our graph we had before is this particular line that we have showing the zero point of the axis. Since we have drawn the x-axis below, we can go ahead and add this line. In Excel, it's not easy to introduce a line so the easiest thing is to use a line that I have already added and copy and paste this. How I got this line was creating a line in PowerPoint and then copying it from PowerPoint and bringing it into our Excel graph. So we'll copy this line and we'll put it onto our new plot. And once we have the line within the plot, now we can move it and bring it to exactly the zero point of the axis. And that will give us a line showing this is the zero point. And now we see even in this chart, looking at the mobility changes, and we can actually change this title just a little bit more. Since we looked at retail and recreation, let's make this our title. So this is the retail and recreation uh, section that we're looking at and looking at the mobility changes. 
we see at the beginning uh, of March, there was not much changes, but then with the introduction of stay-at-home orders, the different interventions that were applied, we see there clearly was certain reduction in activity in these locations. Some counties more than the others. And that's how we can plot a graph looking at the different um, areas, different mobility data to compare different counties in our groups. So, as I mentioned, how to get these types of uh, lines, please refer to a, the previous video. And we can see also the data for grocery and pharmacy where there are certain changes when it comes to parks. In these counties that we are comparing, there wasn't much of a change. Some counties, yes, maybe, but some others, individuals still visited parks even though there were certain measures. So these are things that we need to take into account when we are looking at the data and looking at how the cases are spread in some of these counties. Transit stations, we clearly see there was a reduction in public transportation that was used. Workplaces, many individuals did not go to work during this time. Residential, as we can see, there was an increase since many individuals started staying at home, working at home. So these data taken together start, is starting to make some sense and giving us a way to compare with our case incidents, cumulative incidents, calculations that we have made. And just looking at some of these graphs for the weekly data, we see this is much more easier to interpret when compared to our data on the daily axis, where we see the same data, we're using the same data, but it's much more cleaner on a weekly axis, giving us a better ability to make better comparisons.